Hi, I'm Ashton. I made myself a coffee. Good morning. Um, and today I wanted to revisit the gender tag. So the gender tag is something that Ashley Wilde came up with years ago. Um, and it was actually one of the first videos that I like ever made on my channel. It is the fourth video I've published. Um, I will link it in the description if you want to hear like what I said the first time. Um, but today I'm going to watch it and re-answer the question and talk a little bit about like if my identity's changed and what aspects of it have changed. Um, and I haven't watched this video in like a year, um, but it was published April 14th, 2017, which isn't terribly long ago, but in the scope of my channel, that's like one of my oldest videos. So yeah, I'm going to watch it, answer the questions in a way that uh, applies to me now and talk about how I was then. Oh, there's an ad. Okay. I'll watch the ad. <laughs> Um, while the ad plays, I'm just, it's not skippable, but while the ad plays, I wanted to say, um, a couple of you have, like, expressed concern that, like, you've seen a Trump ad in my video or one of those fucking PragerU ads. Um, I am so sorry if that has happened to you. I actually went into AdSense. Um, I had a couple categories, like, mini categories blocked before, but I actually blocked all political ads and all religious ads. Um, so that should cover those two things. But if you do see anything like that on my channel, please do let me know. If you can send me the link to the ad directly, I can block it that way. If you can't do that, I can always block more general categories, um, which, you know, isn't like a good thing to do in general with AdSense, but like I can do that. Um, and if I need to, I absolutely will. Anyways, let's watch this video. The ad's over. Oh my God. It starts with my face, like really close to the camera. And I'm like, do you want to talk about gender? I would never do that now. Oof. Um, <laughs> okay. I started it with Hi, I'm Ashton. See, I, this has been like a long time thing. Um, my angle's terrible. The lighting is even worse than it is now, but it's fine. <laughs> Number one is how do you identify your gender? And what I said in this video, uh, is boy, male, man, trans boy. But I also did say, however, I don't completely identify as binary. I feel like there's a part of me that is just genderless and that still applies. I say my gender is still very much like that's a good description of it. Um, I'm a trans man and I identify very closely to male, but not completely. I said that I ask for people to use he, him pronouns for me, but I'm also fine with they, them. Still true. Um, however, I most of the time introduce myself with both at the same time. Um, cause I do like when people use them interchangeably and I get called he a lot more often just because it's the easier pronoun for people. But, um, I do like being called both interchangeably. Both are cool. Um, if you use both in the same sentence, you're rad. Um, you know, just both. Anything but she, really. So again, that hasn't changed. So my gender identity and my pronouns are still the same. Um, so three, talk about your, like, presentation and how you dress and stuff. So I still dress mostly the same. Um, I said in this video that I wear a leather jacket a lot. I have a pleather jacket from Doll's Kill that I actually haven't worn in forever. Let me go, let me go grab it, let's see. This still mostly fits, but my shoulders, I, I, did, I don't even realize this until I put on older clothes, but my shoulders are so much broader now. Like my shoulders barely fit into this. Look how far out they are compared to like the seam. Nice. So this is still something that I would totally wear, but it definitely doesn't fit my upper arms. Like I, I'm thicker now. <laughs> I don't know if it's muscle or whatever, but like testosterone, you know, definitely gave me a bigger upper figure, if that makes sense. Um, it has a pin on it of a bagel. So, you know, I also mentioned that I always wear my boyfriend's jacket, still true. Um, and black jeans and a band tee, also still true, except right now I am wearing um, bat pajamas on my bottom half, but you don't see that, so it's fine. I also talked about um, docks. I usually wore um, an old pair of my dad's docks that were like 30 or 40 years old. Those have been retired because between my dad and I wearing them, they got really, really like very old and just not great shoes anymore, but they lasted years and years and years, so like, Great shoes. Um, currently, I have three pairs of Docs. I have purple chrome ones, um, I have vegan leather ones, and then I have um, kind of snakeskin patterned ones. I wear them all like interchangeably. I probably wear the normal vegan leather ones the most often, but I love the purple ones so much. The snakeskin styled ones are like really fun, and whenever I need like a little bit more pattern in an outfit, I'll wear those. I would say I still dress mainly the same, but maybe a little bit less like emo stereotypically and a bit more like punk-ish? I don't know. Um, classifying my style is like something that I don't really worry about all that much. I said in this video that I present in an almost like completely androgynous way, which I would say is true, but I see myself presenting as more masculine now. Even if other people see the way I dress as relatively androgynous, I feel like most myself and most masculine with what I do wear. So 
you know, there's that. Um, and I said that for formal events, I wear a, you know, suit and bow tie. Still true. Um, so yeah, that hasn't changed either. <laughs> I also said that I bind and I pack. Um, I don't bind anymore because I don't have boobs anymore. And I still do pack, not all the time, um, but depending on like what pants I'm wearing, because if I'm wearing super skinny jeans and I feel like very awkward packing, but I do still pack um, quite often, so yeah. The next question is about body hair. I talked about my head hair first. Um, this was the beginning of my mohawk phase. The mohawk that I never spiked up and just kind of looked like a mullet. Um, it was a look. I actually liked it, and I look back at it, and I'm like, that was cute, um, but not everybody did, um, which I totally get, not everybody's thing. So this was when I started growing up my mohawk uh, a year and a half ago or so, but I talked about I had a side shave before, and I had a pixie before that. Um, I'm back to the side shave, kind of, now. This has grown a lot. I've had many days where I'm like, hmm, I should just shave my head, but I haven't done it yet. If I do, I'll probably make a video, don't worry. But yeah, I've always enjoyed playing around with my hairstyle, and I really love the side shave type thing. Even though it is, like, more feminine, I can't really care. My hair grows really, really fast, and it's fun to just kind of play around with, so my head hair is constantly changing. So my armpits and my legs, I still don't shave, and I talked about in this video, oh, my leg hair is transparent. Not anymore, bitch! <laughs> I was like two or three months on testosterone at this point, um, and I actually have leg hair now. It's wild, like you can see it. My legs are fuzzy, and it's not transparent, and it makes me very, very gender euphoric, so I don't shave my legs, still don't shave my armpits, um, just because like I can't be bothered. I don't see the point of shaving my armpits, and I said in this video that I can't grow facial hair. I can now. Um, it's majority peach fuzz, but I have a few like darker ones, and I shave every so often. Uh, if I don't, you start to see like the fuzzy upper lip, and I might even have that right now, I'm kind of due to shave. Um, but yeah, I do shave my face now just because the facial hair that I do have is very like, you know, boyish. Someday maybe I will like grow a more stubble look. I always get stubble and subtle confused, I don't know why, but I do. So maybe someday I'll have a subtle stubble, <laughs> but for now I do shave my face. Even though they asked about body hair, I didn't talk about my tummy hair or my hair around my genital region. At this point, I didn't have hair on my tummy, so I didn't feel the need to talk about it, but I do now, and I love it. Um, it makes me very, like, gender euphoric again. I've always thought that, like, little tummy hair, like, happy trail types things are so fucking cute, and I'm really happy that I have one. I do shave, um, but that's mostly because I find it really uncomfortable to pack with, like, hair. Um, I don't know why, I just, I don't like that feeling of like sensory wise um i just do it for sensory reasons not necessarily aesthetic ones the next question is about cosmetics and i said i don't really wear makeup except sometimes i wear sparkles still very true i love the way that winged eyeliner looks on me but it is seen as super feminine and i am absolute shit at it so i don't do it i'll just wear sparkles i also said that i used to paint my nails black which is seen as a kind of gender neutral thing in the alternative community in my own words i hate that i'm so sorry so i guess in this video i said i used to paint my nails black i still do sometimes i just do it a lot less often because like the black nail polish i have right now is so so bad like it's very very old and clumpy so i haven't done that in a while but i do enjoy having my nails painted black um, just for my own personal style. It's not really a gender thing for me. Right. As for any gendered like body soaps or cleansers and stuff, um, I said in this video that I just use normal soaps. Still true. I don't really think my like shampoo or body wash is gendered. Um, I used orange body wash at the time of this video. I still use orange body wash. I smell like oranges. For deodorant though, I do use a men's deodorant. Um, just because men's deodorant tends to be like stronger. And honestly, even if you don't identify as a man, I would like use men's deodorant like it, it's stronger and cheaper a lot of the times but i don't really use it for like the scent i just use a odorless one um because i i actually really really hate any like cologne scents like my brother wears old spice and, and mm -mm, just not my thing so yeah now i either use genderless products or more masculine ones but in this video i use like all genderless cool so number six was do you get misgendered and if so how often and this video said yes all the time all day there's nothing i can do about it um Still kind of true. I would say I get gendered correctly a lot more often. Um, my family's better about it, and I make my, and I make my immediate family pay me ten cents every time they misgender me. My brother currently owes me ten cents. My mom owes me forty cents, and my dad owes me like fifteen because he gave me a quarter once. I don't know, but uh, I ought to collect my dues pretty soon. But anyways, um, people have gotten better about misgendering me. Teachers that I've had before, like my band teacher and my philosophy teacher, are great, and they never do it. Um, 
my eighth teacher the first week of school she kept calling me bam and i corrected her and now she calls me sir or nothing at all um so you know that's an improvement but i feel like i get gendered correctly by strangers a lot more often now than i did then and it could be partly like like i talked about my shoulders or maybe my voice even my face i don't really know like i'm not great at looking myself from like an objective perspective um but yeah i get misgendered less now which is lovely all right so seven was do you get dysphoria and how does it affect you i said yes a lot still true i said in this video that my voice um my chest and my hips were the biggest causes of dysphoria my chest and my voice don't cause me dysphoria anymore yay um my hips still are like a big source of dysphoria um, but I would say my biggest one currently is like the existence of my uterus. I hate it. I'm gonna do a video soon talking about getting a hysterectomy possibly in the future, why I want one, and stuff like that. But yeah, currently like having a uterus just really, really makes me real dysphoric. But um, aside from like physical body dysphoria, I get a lot of social dysphoria because I am still misgendered like quite frequently and being misgendered gives me a lot of social dysphoria but body dysphoria i would say being on t for over a year and a half now has definitely helped um but yeah i still do have like significant amounts of dysphoria but definitely not as much as i did during this time so that's that's a nice thing to hear oh um this is the question about do you want kids would you care for them would you carry one um and i just went i've been with my boyfriend for over a year i've been with him for over two and a half years now so yeah, um, <laughs> I love him. Anyways, I also said, I'm not at high school yet, so I don't fucking know. That still applies. Um, I may be in my last year of high school, but like, I'm not looking to have kids in the next, like, I'm soon if I do, it'll be like 10, 15 years down the line, so. Um, I did say that Jack and I would probably like share guardianship, caretakership, like I don't think either of us would be the primary caretaker, but again, like that is so far down the line, I don't even want to think about it. Um, and then I said I would definitely never carry a child, just dysphoria-wise, that would be awful. Uh, still true, I want my uterus removed. <laughs> and I said in this video that if I ever did have a kid, I would probably adopt them. Also still true. But the next question is about money, and this one I don't think has changed that much at all. Um, I said in this video that Jack and I kind of take turns paying for dates, which is still true. Before we left for college, we went to go see a movie and have dinner, and he paid for dinner and I paid for the movie. So we'll do stuff like that. Like, I wouldn't say either one of us are particularly, like, the one that pays all the time. So, you know, he, he does prefer to, I think, because he always tries to, but I don't let him all the time. So, you know, there's that. It wouldn't bother me if he made more than me in the long run. Like, I, I don't care about stuff like that as long as we're both comfortable than whatever but that that's one of the weirdest gender roles in my eyes like why would you care if your partner made more money than you i don't know anyways i'm gay does not apply all right and the last question is is there anything else that you would like to share about your gender and i said no but i think it's something that we should all be more open about and there's a lot to talk about within it still true i feel like i've shared a lot more about my gender now than i had at the time of putting out this video considering i've been making videos for two and a half years now wait one and a half <laughs> two and a half years is a lot longer than that um, I feel like I have put a lot more out there about my gender than I had at the time of making this video. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable and secure in my gender, and I feel like I present closer to the way that I want to now. Um, but yeah, I guess I would just like to say that gender can change. Um, I still identify very, very much the same as I did um, when I made this video, but you know, other things have changed and that's all right too. I said that people should embrace their identity and be proud of who they are because gender variance and variance in gender expression are beautiful things. Still also very true. I very much agree with that. Go, go 15 year old me. Oh, I said, see you later, maybe. Oh, I have evolved. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, that was my gender tag from, like, when I had just turned 16. I think I was, like, 15 in one month or something, but, um, yeah, so I guess that gives you a little bit of insight into how a couple things have changed and a couple things that have kind of stayed the same. So, I hope that was interesting for you. I enjoyed filming this. I've seen a couple do- I've seen a couple people do the gender tag recently, and I was like, oh, I did that so long ago, I should revisit it. So, here I am, revisiting my own gender. <laughs> so, I hope that you're comfortable with how you identify, and if you aren't and you're still questioning, then that's okay too, and know that I support you in that, and I'll talk to you later, maybe.